The next type of hypothesis test we're going to turn our attention to is a hypothesis test for two means. As we attempt to answer the question, how do we compare two means? And just as is the case with all the other different hypothesis tests, the process is exactly the same. The only difference is we have some formulas to help us set up our test statistic. First, the distribution for comparing two means. When we're comparing two means, we want to know if two separate groups have the same average. Is there a difference between the two groups, or is one group higher or lower than the other group? And when we're interested in comparing them, what we're really comparing is the difference, or the mean of the first group minus the mean of the second group. And because we don't know those population standard deviations, it's going to be a t distribution with a subscript that represents the degrees of freedom. Now, the degrees of freedom is an ugly formula. If you really want to know what it is, you can look it up in your book. It is in the section in your book pre uh, preceding the practice assignments that we're doing for today. It's ugly. We are going to cheat, and we will use a calculator. We'll also use a calculator to find the t statistic, but just so that we have it, the standard error for two means is the square root of the first standard deviation squared divided by the first sample size plus the second standard deviation squared divided by the second sample size. And then we use that standard error to calculate our test statistic, t, which is the difference in the means, a and b, divided by the standard error. But as was the, with the case with the t distribution with one mean, it will be also the case with the t distribution with two means that we will use the calculator to do the hard calculations for us. The setup is identical. First, you will hit the stat button. Then you will scroll over to tests. And then you will scroll down. But this time, you're going to scroll down to select the two sample t-test. Once you're in the two sample t-test, you will enter all the stats we have from our problem. And again, if the calculator is expecting you to enter the data, we're not going to enter the data. So you might need to highlight stats if needed. When you get in there, the first thing it's going to ask you is for x bar 1. That is the first sample mean. Then it will ask you for sx1. That is the first sample standard deviation. And it'll ask you for n1, which is the first sample size. So we enter in all the information about the first group that we're going to compare to the second group, which, as you might expect, you'll see x bar 2, sx2, and n2 is for the second sample that we will compare it with. Then it will give us a mu, which is the alternate 
hypothesis symbol. We need to tell the calculator, is this a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test, and which direction it is. And finally, the last thing the calculator will ask us for is if we have pooled data. And for our purposes, the answer is always going to be no. We are not pooling the data. And I'll show you what this looks like on the calculator again. But again, it's going to be easiest to see it if we have an example to work with. So for our example, you want to know if there is a difference in GPA of online students and face-to-face -face students. So to determine this, you survey 32 online students. who have an average GPA of 3.45 with a standard deviation of 0 0.7. You also interview 41 face-to-face -face students who have an average GPA of 3.67 with a standard deviation of 0 0.4. If alpha equals 0.10, Can you conclude the groups are different? We're comparing the average between the two groups, not just a claim and testing against the claimed GPA. We just want to know, is there a difference between these two groups? we have two means that we're comparing. Well, the mean of the online students is hypothesized then to be the same as the mean of the face-to-face -face students. Again, I'm using subscripts to make it really clear which group I'm talking about. The null hypothesis, no difference. They are equal. The alternative hypothesis is going to be either one is greater or they're not equal to each other. This example didn't give me any inkling of a direction. They didn't say face-to-face -face or higher or GPA or online students have a lower GPA or anything like that. So we are just looking to see if the online students are not equal to the face-to-face -face students, which means we have a two-tailed test. In other words, we have our t distribution with our hypothesized difference. We hypothesize that the difference between the GPAs is 0. And we'll reject on either tail. Whether it's higher or lower, we will reject on either tail. 
Well, the actual difference Let's add that to our picture. The actual difference in GPAs, and we have to subtract in the same order of the hypothesis. So the online GPA has to come first. The online GPA was 3.45. And we subtract the face-to-face -face GPA of 3.67. And we end up with 0.22, negative 0.22. So negative 0.22 is the x value we're looking for. We need to figure out what the t values are. Well, our distribution the difference between online students and face-to-face -face students is a t distribution. But we don't really know the degrees of freedom because the it's got that ugly formula. So we're going to go to our calculator. Again, on the calculator, the way we get to the test is we'll go to stat. It's right next to the arrows. We'll scroll over to test. And we'll scroll down to the two sample t test. Make sure stats is highlighted, because that's what we have. Our first group, the online students, we said the online students have an average GPA of 3.45 with a standard deviation of 0.7. And we said that there are 32 of them. The second group, the face-to-face -face students, have an average GPA of 3.67 and a standard deviation of 0.4. And there were 41 of them. We select an alternate hypothesis of not equals. Pooled is going to be no for our purposes. And when we hit calculate, you'll see the calculator gives us the three key pieces of information we need. The degrees of freedom to finish out the distribution. Notice it's an ugly decimal. That's very common with two samples and a t value and a p value. Let's copy that information over. So the distribution had 46.5 degrees of freedom. The t value that came off the calculator was negative 1.59. So negative 1.59 to the left of 0. And a p value equal to 0.1193. What does that p-value of 0.1193 mean? Well, remember, the p-value is the probability the null hypothesis is true given our survey. So based on our survey, the probability the average GPA is the same for online and face-to-face -face students is 11.93%. And we compare that p-value to the alpha, which is the smallest probability where we would still believe the null hypothesis is true. We have a greater probability, so we're going to go ahead and say our decision, because the probability the p-value is bigger than alpha, we will fail to reject. And the reason for that is the p-value is greater than alpha. There's more evidence for the null hypothesis. The p-value is 0.1193. Alpha is only 0.10. And so for our conclusion, 
in context because we failed to reject. We say there is not sufficient evidence to conclude. And then we will state the alternate hypothesis in context, that there is a difference between the means. There is a difference between the mean GPA of online and face-to-face -face students. Again, we should start to feel really familiar and comfortable with this process of going through a hypothesis test. It's exactly the same regardless of if we're testing one or two means or proportions. The process is exactly the same. The only tweak that's different each time is actually calculating the distribution and the test statistic. But we should be very good at the process of setting up and conducting the hypothesis test by now. So you can take a look at those on the assignment. We'll work out with them a little bit more in class, and we'll look forward to seeing you then.